Welcome to the Philanthropy Tank's Teen Talk. Philanthropy Tank is a nonprofit organization that empowers and mentors teens to develop their own social impact programs that address issues affecting our communities. Leading our conversation are Daisy Lee, Marina Bartow, and Sabrina Doty, who have all founded programs that address issues that impact our climate. Philanthropy Tank is an organization that helps students like me create nonprofits. In 2018, uh, Philanthropy Tank granted my program, Surface 71, um, enough money to create and continue our nonprofit. Um, Surface 71 is committed to reducing plastics and conserving our oceans. We do this through initiatives like cleaning our beaches. Um, we try to do that at least once a month and install water stations in public schools around Palm Beach County. And with me is Daisy. Hi, my name is Daisy Lee and my project Down to Earth was recently awarded a grant from Philanthropy Tank in 2023. And Down to Earth seeks to educate upper elementary school students in fourth and fifth grade about climate change through an interactive lesson and ultimately a field trip to see science on a sphere at the museum. And next we have Sabrina. Hi, my name's Sabrina Doty. My program, Green Garments, was recently funded this past year. We aim to educate Palm Beach County students about their usage of clothing in terms of fast fashion and how to repurpose those clothes to help keep it out of the trash cycle. Today we're having a discussion about climate change. And the first question is, what is climate change? I think that climate change is just the change in climate in a certain area over time. Yeah, I think it's specifically important to like us, especially in South Florida, as heat has been increasing rapidly and all across the country as this past July, heat was at its record high about like 75 degrees nationally or globally, actually. Mm -hmm, yes, definitely. And um, I know that climate change has been prevalent historically in the past 800,000 years. We've had around eight cycles of climate fluctuations from ice ages to warming periods. However, now it's happening at an unprecedented rate. And it's mainly anthropogenic now. So it's human caused. And so what is climate change? Climate change at its most basic level is just the change in climate over a certain period of time. This can be seen most commonly in South Florida, where we are right now, as heat temperatures have been increasing rapidly, as, as it has been around the globe. As this July, heat temperatures have been rising up to 75 degrees globally, which is a massive increase since the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. As Floridians, we're particularly vulnerable to climate change impacts. And climate change um, has been occurring historically over the past 800,000 years. Um, there have been natural cycles of um, warmer periods and then ice ages. However, now we're seeing climate change happen at an unprecedented rate, um, and it's primarily anthropogenic, um, so it's human caused now. And Serena, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think humans are causing climate change mainly because of their usage of throwing away items and also their usage of fossil fuels, which contributes to the environment greatly as CFCs are released into the atmosphere, blocking the ozone layer, increasing temperatures. Also, our trash buildup that is happening in oceans is massive due to partially clothing, which I focus on, as clothing makes up 7% of the trash in the world. Like Sabrina said, at my beach cleanups that Surface 71 um, puts on, we try to take some of the plastics out of the environment. You know, we found um, shirts, flip-flops, kind of like what she was talking about. And we find, you know, stuff that has been brought from the islands, the Caribbean, um, through the up through the Gulf Stream. And mm -hmm. do you have anything to add to that, Daisy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as we bring up the problem, um, it seems overwhelmingly negative. However, there are many things that we can do to combat climate change to the best of our ability. The primary goal of Down to Earth is to promote climate literacy, and that is kind of our first step towards combating climate change, gaining more awareness from the public and more support for programs and, and policy and action is the first and foremost primary step. And I know that you guys are doing many great things through your programs to combat climate change. Yeah, I agree. Education is the only way for people to know like what's happening in our world, and I think we all educate either students, um, people in the school district, 
And we try to just educate everybody on what's happening, what we see, what we find at beach cleanups, you know, what we see in the ocean, statistics on the rising temperatures. So, yeah, I feel like this is extremely prevalent now as a lot of people seem to still not believe in climate change, even though it's so obviously prevalent in our communities. And it's important to like show them that this is a real thing and it's happening and we need to stop it because soon by 2050, the changes might be irreparable. And I think it's definitely important for humans to realize their impact on the earth by just our cons- like what we consume, our addiction to, you know, buying new things and not replacing them. Um, mm-hmm, yeah. And with the consumerism aspect, a solution would be to reduce our food waste. Um, food waste is surprisingly a really big problem in the United States. And um, as the food goes to the trash sites, um, as it decomposes, it releases a lot of methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas. And that also adds to the feedback cycle. Yeah, clothing is also a huge waste as, especially with trends on TikTok, micro trends are a huge problem as fast fashion brands are mass pumping cheap clothes out for $2 a piece. And those are full of plastic and people throw them away almost instantly after wearing them once. And this is a huge problem as we should be re-wearing our clothes. You can easily help this by going to your local thrift store and just buying some clothes that are super unique and you can't find at your local H&M. Also, you can take any of your clothes that are ripped at your house and make those into new clothes that you can wear for the rest of your life. Yes, I definitely agree with that. I think upcycling is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And um, Marino, um, how does climate change affect our health? So like everyone was mentioning, we live in Florida. And I mean, I see this as an athlete at our beach cleanups. If you're in this, like, if you're just outside from the times of, you know, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., you feel the humidity, you feel how the climate has changed. You know, you could look back like about two years ago, I feel like it just did not feel like this outside. And even on our weather app, it gives us heat warnings. I've never seen anything like that before. One thing especially that impacts our health is just heat illness. Like athletes are not able to participate because they get sick from the heat. So that's definitely a problem. Also, microplastics are also a huge problem, which relates to the ocean, as a lot of fish are eating these plastics in the ocean. And when we consume the fish, then it gets into our systems, which can cause different types of cancers and just long-term problems we don't even know about. Do you have any comments on that in regards to the ocean? Yes. We have, I think, I'm not sure exactly what the statistic is, but I think it's about every month or every year we ingest a credit card-sized amount of plastic just through our diets, not trying to eat. (laughs) Obviously, we're not trying to eat plastics, but just through our diets, it kind of circles back to us. And that's what we try to do is educate students. So we'll bring like showing the microplastics because like you were saying, a lot of people look past the microplastics at beach cleanups. They're trying to look for the big jackpot, I would say, (laughs) like pieces of trash when really the main problem is all the microplastics in seaweeds that we don't see. But fish are eating without knowing, sea turtles are eating. Climate change and global warming in general is known as a threat multiplier, so it exacerbates or worsens the problems that we're already experiencing um, across the world, such as poverty, lack of access to clean water, and uh, disease, and especially disease uh, like vector-borne illnesses from mosquitoes. They're able to proliferate more and Uh, hotter and warmer weather. So that is a big issue that we're facing as well. Yeah, other animals that are facing this problem is polar bears in the Antarctic. And this is very important as animals are overall very important to me because they aren't doing any of this. All humans, this is all anthropogenic and they are just victims to our mass consumption. And especially because the ice is melting in the Antarctic, they are finding less land to live off of as albedo is causing the snow to melt and the water to become darker. And do you guys have any issues that are important to you as well? Yeah, this um, directly affects my program, Surface 71. Um, In recent years, we've seen exponential amounts of plastics on the beach. As much as it, you know, sucks to see all that, it really shows people what's out there and it really gives everybody a wake up call on what's out there. The issue of climate change is really important to me because 
I am really obsessed with space science and <laughs> and everything that has to do with outer space and um, astronomy. And just looking back on our Earth, it's really precious. It's our one and only life support system in the universe. It's the only place that we know to harbor life so far. And there is no other planet like Earth, so it really resonates with me how special our planet is, and we have to do everything in our power to help protect it. Yes, and over a thousand species have already gone endangered in the past hundred years, and rapidly there are going more and more, especially like sea turtles, tigers, so many types of animals that are losing their habitats, and there's nowhere for them to go. At this rate, we don't know if there will be anywhere for us to go, so it's important to conserve our environment for them and for us also. And honestly, as a young person inheriting the problems that come with living on Earth, I think we should all be aware of what we have to protect, what we have to do. I know climate change isn't reversible, but there are small steps we can take every day to reduce the impacts that we're going to inherit. Why do you think it's important to teach young people about the impacts that we have on the climate. We are the next generation to inherit the earth and education is our first step towards creating impact and um, action towards change. So educating children and maybe they can even spark conversations with their parents and guide their families to sustainable actions. For Service 71, we've made plastic sculptures from what we find on the beach that we've brought around to schools, to museums, and we, you know, Put out a poster that kind of explains the impacts of climate change and kind of explains what our mission is and why we clean up the beaches. And going around to schools has been helpful. We've had principals tell us how amazing, you know, how grateful they are that we taught the kids about climate change. And we would always bring swaps to kind of show them that there are other options, you know, rather than a plastic water bottle. They internalized a lot of these. They wanted the reusable water bottles that we had. Yeah, I personally, at a very young age, started to learn how to sew. And after that, my passion just started growing. And recently, I've used that to show myself how to help the environment in that way by making articles of clothing that instead of adding to the problem is helping the problem. And I think teaching a lot of other kids how this can be turned into something fun instead of something tasking is very important. So they can see it as a hobby or just little ways they can help through making their own things, making crafts that take trash from the environment, which they can use to put in galleries and make actual art pieces instead of just fun little projects, which I think is very important. And I think what we also forget is that how impressionable kids are. So if you just tell them, this is what you should use. You should use reusable silverware instead of bringing plastic to school every day. You should use this. They'll internalize it and they'll, they can create those habits right now. Climate change is a slow process. It's difficult to see it um, working through our everyday lives, but it's, it's happening. It's still occurring. And it's difficult to conceptualize sometimes for younger children. So it's amazing that you guys are bringing them to the site and demonstrating them with hands-on activities. They always love fun activities, so I think just engaging them, and then once you engage them, they're more receptive to you. Mm -hmm, definitely. How do you impact kids in your project, Daisy? Down to Earth is a program that's still under development, but our mission is to spread awareness for climate change by viewing Science on a Sphere at the Cox Science Center because it offers that unprecedented bird's eye view of Earth, um, so it helps children to understand the problem at a global scale. Yeah, Green Garments has recently partnered with Resource Depot, which is an organization or resource in West Palm Beach that basically takes in a bunch of scraps and fabric and lots of different supplies. Green Garments is using that to create new clothing items and take their what many people would call trash and make it into treasures instead, which is a great opportunity in our local community. And Marina, is there anything that you partnered with? Yes, so Surface 71 has partnered with and put our plastic sculptures in the Loggerhead Marine Life Center, the Cox Science Center, five different schools, and we were recently in the Coronel, the Surfing Florida World of Water Museum, and we had an event there, and we spoke, and we kind of just introduced people to our mission, which is what we all try to do every day. One interesting thing that Green Garment likes to do is every Halloween we hold a Halloween event where basically we either restructure new Halloween costumes or we help people find costumes from 
thrifted items to instead of take from Amazon items that are mass produced and basically just plastic, we can take in pre-owned clothing and recycle it into something unique that you won't find anyone else wearing, which I think is very unique to our program. Yeah, and Surface 71 does beach cleanups every single month. Currently, we are working to install more water stations in Palm Beach County schools. Right now, we're in 11 schools, and we really hope to expand. What are some ways you guys think students and adults can reduce plastics in their daily lives to help our climate change efforts? Well, I think that the next time you decide you want to go shopping, instead of going to your local mall, just go straight to a thrift store, which is one of the first steps. Plus, it's much cheaper than many stores are, and it helps the environment while you're doing it. I think that's one of the best steps you can take. Daisy, is there anything you can do? Yeah, another great way to reduce our carbon footprints is to carpool. And um, students, you can carpool with other friends to school. And um, I know that I plan on doing that later on in the year, um, be driving with some friends or just taking the bus. That's also a really sustainable alternative. Um, and just doing anything, everything in our control to reduce our carbon footprints. And usually these solutions are also very cost effective and can help us save money. So it's a win-win. Usually at my beach cleanups, I have a big poster of all the swaps that you can make, but I'll just explain them. Um, First is detergent. Most people get Tide Pods, which are made of plastics, or they get a jug of Tide, where there's actually a powdered version of Tide that comes in a cardboard box. It's more efficient. It's like money friendly. A lot of um, swaps are honestly cheaper because they come in bulk, especially Gatorade actually comes in powder form and then you're not wasting you know 12 or 24 plastic bottles when you can make it at home along with that plastic water bottles you know you could buy a pack of 24 water bottles or you can buy you know a 20 dollar reusable water bottle and use it you know over and over until basically you can't use it anymore in my house we never take like plastic silverware for school lunch I always bring my reusable, like just honestly regular silverware because you don't need anything else. I always bring a Tupperware, no like plastic sandwich bags, and those can also be reused over and over again. Yeah, so I think the most important thing to remember is just reduce, reuse, and recycle, not throwing out as many things as possible. And if you do have to, make sure to recycle it into your bins that will be picked up by your local recycling department. So that helps greatly and then also just reusing and using those materials in things you can do every day like crafts for kids or just using scraps like fabric scraps I like to make pillows and instead of stuffing I like to use the fabric scraps for the stuffing for the pillows even for like dolls for kids you can do the same thing instead of going to the store and buying dolls I think there's just a lot of small things you can use to take just random pieces of trash and make them into not so terrible things Mm -hmm. yeah another fun concept that is going through social media right now, or at least in the past couple of years, is Meatless Mondays. And there are simple ways that we can, instead of fully transitioning to vegetarianism, we can eliminate meats from our diets for only one day a week, and that would still create a sustainable amount of change in children. You can convince your parents to start implementing Meatless Mondays in your week, and because livestock is a, a large contributor to carbon dioxide emissions and methane emissions as well. So how can people volunteer in your program? Honestly, coming out to beach cleanups is just the easiest way to do it. You know, you get community service hours, you help your community, and I bet every single person listening has at least one organization in their community, even if it's not mine, that you can volunteer at, do a park cleanup, do a beach cleanup, do a lake cleanup, I don't know. I know we all live in different areas, so that is one way you can come out and help the cause. I think promoting things on social media is very important as well, because since especially most people our age, which are teenagers, is on social media. And it's very easy to spread events and things like that through there instead of like posters, especially in the green team at my school. I like to promote our green garments and have people from there help out with the cause, especially people in the costume departments as well in our theater program. I think just getting people from all different groups and bringing them together for one single cause is very important, whether it be through school or locally, It's all important. So what got you guys interested in conserving the environment and advocating about climate change? 
My whole life, I've been going camping, whether it be in like Florida's forests or in North Carolina, New York, et cetera. But I think just being one with nature always really inspired me to help save it, especially with animals. That's one of my biggest passions. Apart from that, I've also always loved thrifting. And I feel like my style has always grown a lot from not buying things from public stores, but just buying through resellers or in thrift stores and even hand-me-downs from my cousins. And I think combining my two passions always really motivated me to help make change as it was fun for me and also educational. So that's a big thing for me. I love fixing up clothes. I like making patches for things, altering clothes, especially for my friends when they buy a skirt that doesn't fit them right. I love to help them make it fit them perfectly because that's what I do for myself a lot. And how does this relate to you guys as well? For me, I, um, like I touched on before, I've been interested in space science and I've watched um, a lot of interviews from astronauts after their missions in space and a resounding theme in their conversations were just how beautiful the Earth is from that space perspective and they realized how precious and special our Earth is. And just from that, I realized that um, climate change and other environmental issues are a big threat to our blue marble planets the only known planet to harbor life. I, I was moved by that and I, I wanted to do something about it and be a part of climate change advocacy. Kind of like you, Sabrina, um, a little bit different, but I grew up, you know, going to the beach probably every single weekend. Then I've got involved in beach cleanups and really seeing what is on our beaches is kind of impacted me to join Surface 71, you know, continue its mission. I want to give other kids the opportunity to really come to that realization, especially in Florida when you're surrounded by the beauty of our environment. It's very easy to, you know, want to protect it, want to conserve it. So one thing that you can do also is advocate to the government, advocate to the city. I remember writing a letter when I was probably in first grade to the president about why we need to protect our intercoastals in Florida. And why we need to clean them up, things like that. And I got a letter back and it was probably the best thing I've ever received. Surface 71 has gone to city meetings. When the straw band was coming around, we went, you know, set our peace. What are other ways you think you can advocate for climate change? Yeah, I think doing events in your community like beach cleanups are very important or just setting up little workshops where people can come in and join in the cause is very important, even if it's just on a whim. It's very important to get people to stop by and see what you're doing, especially with posters, making it look intriguing is very important. Just getting as many people involved in the process is most helpful, I think. And I know that the city of West Palm Beach has programs such as tree giveaways, and just by attending and showing up, city officials will know that there is an immense amount of support. And once they know that more people are behind this certain cause, they're more likely to promote and support legislation and policies. I agree with Daisy. A lot of commissioners and people who work for the city really understand, you know, the beauty of West Palm Beach and they want to help too. We have organizations like Keep Palm Beach County Beautiful. We have Keep America Beautiful. Just trying to work with other organizations, I think, is the best way to go because collaborating with people, you can always give each other ideas, bounce off of each other, kind of like what we're doing here. So I think just trying to partner with people is very important to really raise awareness about what's happening. Yeah, just because all of our motivations are very different doesn't mean we're all not contributing to the same problem, which I think really unites us as what we're doing here now. And just because they're not similar to each other doesn't mean they aren't also similar to each other in another way. Because we're all here for the same cause, climate change, even though, you know, we may show it in different ways, you know, you, Sabrina, with sustainable fashion, Daisy with the educating students, and me with the beach cleanups, we're all here for the same cause. What do you guys want to do with, you know, either your career in the future? Does it come back to, you know, the climate, the ocean? What do you guys want to do? So I personally want to go into veterinary science and also wildlife conservation because, as I said earlier, I think it's very important to help the animals as 
they haven't really been contributing much to climate change and they're just victims of it. And I want to go in the field and help bring back some endangered species and their habitats to make it a better life for them, especially as the urbanization of society has been moving into their habitats and deforestation has been removing their habitats also. It's very important for some people to just go out and help. And I think also through veterinary science, I can help them medically instead of just environmentally, which is very important in my opinion. And Daisy, what do you think? I'm largely interested in the science fields and also engineering, aerospace engineering. And for the longest time, I've grappled with the two contrasting ideas of climate change advocacy and aerospace and aviation, which is a large contributor to climate change and and carbon emissions. So um, what I hope to accomplish in the future is to um, help promote more sustainability in the aviation industries because it's impossible now that it's already so widely established to suddenly to, to completely cut out air travel. And so just finding ways to make aviation more sustainable, finding solutions, um, be it through different propulsion techniques or um, through making planes more aerodynamically streamlined, whatever it is, I hope to be able to make a positive impact in the long run. I think I want to go into ocean engineering or oceanography, but I definitely agree with you. Even if you're not going into the most sustainable field, you can be the one advocating for sustainability. You can be the one speaking up, which everyone needs. You know, if you wanted to go into a sustainable field, which is amazing, we really need to be where um, we're not. I guess I would say, you know, like advocating for sustainability where aerospace technically isn't sustainable. You want to be, you know, the most outspoken person. This has been an interesting conversation. What are some points you kind of want to drive home or restate to tell the audience? You know, what are some ways you can reduce plastics? Maybe what your mission is? Daisy, what's yours? Um, Yeah, what I want to drive home is that although climate change seems overwhelmingly bleak, we can be part of the change and Although each individual seems trivial, if we all come together to make those changes, to make those impacts, we can create um, a tide wave, a, a really large movement of change in the right direction. Yeah, I think also making just little changes in your daily life, such as recycling your um, materials and repurposing everything is also very important. Trying not to throw away things, recycling, it's all very important just on a daily level. I think if you're listening to this, today is the day to, you know, put some sustainable um, habits into practice. Switch your laundry detergent, like I said, powdered Gatorade, buy a reusable water bottle today if you don't have one already. If you're hearing this as a kid, kind of maybe tell your parents what you're interested in. If you see some habits that you're not a fan of, you know, try to be the change in the world. Try to change your habits so you you can start it now you know what I mean today every day is a new day I know that we said philanthropy tank was our biggest sponsor but you know we came from somewhere Marina what were some of the sources of your inspiration along the way Surface 71 was actually started as a water for India project shout out to Miss Killingsworth Coniston Middle School um, inspired Emily and Gemma first they went on a trip to India and really saw the conditions how they had no fresh water At first, they wanted, you know, to bring fresh water to the world, but they kind of started it more locally, cleaning up our waters here. And Miss Killingsworth was a a catalyst that helped them create Surface 71, helped them get the resources, connected them with Philanthropy Tank. And then also Diane Bueller with Friends of Palm Beach helped us develop, you know, our beach cleanups connected us with Solid Waste Authority, connected us to getting all our supplies. So I want to give a big thank you to the two of them, Gemma and Emily, too, um, for starting Surface 71. What about you, Sabrina? My biggest inspirations were probably my parents, Sarah and John Doty. My dad always brought me camping, and he really facilitated my love for the environment, taking me biking constantly, um, rafting down rivers, constantly trying to get me out into the nature instead of kept inside my room all day. And my mom always pushed me to sew in my clothes, putting me in sewing lessons and sewing camps, and it always just really pushed my love for it. And I think just both of them together made green garments perfect for me. And I appreciate them both very much for this. And I also want to thank the amazing mentors and supporters at Philanthropy Tank, Mr. Don Bird, Miss Amy, and also Miss Nakia. They've been an incredible help along the way. 
And I think we all want to thank you for tuning into this program, and we all hope that you internalize some of the things that you heard today. This has been Philanthropy Tanks Teen Talk. Thanks for joining. For more information about these and other teen programs, please visit us at www.philanthropytank.org.